Well, Michael's got to make sure he's not walking around. You need a problem? Well, since you took my charger This away, is my charger. Watch my water. I have to come over here get this, so I thought I'd do it before you started. Very it's smart. Not. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Against All Odds podcast. I'm joined here today with my, <laughs> with my mom and dad. <laughs> with your face. <laughs> Against All Odds, I thought this would become Elite One. There, is, you don't follow me at all. This no. Is what <laughs> what do you do? So my dad, so dad, I run a YouTube channel called Become Elite. It's a it's a soccer YouTube channel. Has cool. an Instagram page. It's about the daily life of a professional soccer player. And I have a podcast called the Against All Odds podcast. This is what you're on right now. This is a microphone. That's my laptop, and that's the camera. Cool. All right, roll intro. <laughs> oh my god. Good start. <laughs> So today I want you guys to do most of the talking. I have some questions for you, but we can just, you know, keep it improv, kind of go off the rails, do whatever, you know, what we want. But um, mainly I just want to talk about uh, you guys. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. It's going to change it up. And basically how you raise like one of the coolest people oh in the goodness. entire world. Because you did something right. Has Mike been in here before? <laughs> or are we talking about you? Talk about me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah me. Um, so the first thing is... I want to know what three words represented your approach to parenting and why. Three words. And you can have each three words. Like if you're, your parenting approach, if you could narrow it down to three words. Yeah. Um, Consistent. Oh, okay. Yeah, bang on yeah, the table a little bit more when you yeah. talk. Consistent. <laughs> Consistency. Cons yeah. Consistency. Yeah. Consequences that you follow through with. Consequences. Sounds, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, high expectations. That's one of two words, but... Yeah, okay, that'll, be, the, that'll one. be one thing. Yeah. Um, consistency, high expectations. Um, oh, accountability. Okay. For your actions. Like, if you did something, you can blame other people for the mm. issues. What else? That's, that's pretty much three. Yeah. That's good. All right. Yeah. That's, I like that. So what do you mean by consistency, though? Well... Oh. I think the biggest thing we tried and always succeed in, but tried was that if um, there were rules, you know, either with your homework or with chores or with, um, you know, behavior in the house, whatever. And if those rules weren't met when you were little, it was always a timeout, which you spent a lot of time in. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in timeouts. Um, or, you know, or things were taken away from you, your video games or that type of thing. But it wasn't just... We tried not to just go, okay, today I'm feeling tired. I don't feel like disciplining, so it's not going to happen. So everything, I think we had we had a very set schedule. I mean, it came down to even the idea of like what, what time we had dinner. We all you know had dinner together. What the, what the routine was after dinner. We you know, you watched a little cartoon, Rugrats. You had your chocolate milk. Then we would all read books at night, and then everyone went to bed at the same time every night. And there's just that consistency, I think, in the routines and the discipline. Um, so it became just normal. Yeah. And I, I think that even for my life today, like I still crave routine. And when I don't have routine, I try to quickly get into a routine as quick as possible. Yeah. Because I think we're both routine people, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Just different type of ways we go about it, our routines. <laughs> but we're both routine we have people. different priorities. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what well, mom was one of my things to be on my list, high priority, they're used to be on the bottom of my list. What's, it, what's like an example of that? What did you just ask me to do? And I was just like, the dishes? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I don't remember, but yeah, obviously, there's things that are more yeah. important to me. What, than what, what do you? Uh, what you I want to talk about consequences because I feel like what you said I spent a lot of my childhood in timeout. Well, the one thing we uh, for consistency for whatever the discipline was, we both agreed to it. So it wouldn't be like, oh no, he's fine. He, you know, you don't have to not do something or a timeout. We're pretty much if one got mad and put you in a timeout or any anybody in a timeout, then the other parent would just agree with it and just roll with it. Mm -hmm. There was no, you know, oh, he's fine. He's just being a child, that type of stuff. We had pretty strict rules actually for young when you guys were young all the way through, I would say that we tended to be a little bit more strict than a lot of other parents when it came to, you know, like I said before, the routines, what shows you could watch. Um, you How know. you act at a restaurant. Yeah. There's no screaming, yelling. It was, you'll, 
You'll sit down and shut up. <laughs> well, it goes back to that, again, what I said, the third thing was the high expectations. Even when you were four, five, three, whatever years old, all of, all of you, um, it was that high expectation that it doesn't matter what your age is, you can learn how to be well behaved or learn how to have a conversation with somebody or learn how to um, balance your time or um, you know figure out okay I've got these things to do during the day it wasn't just like oh he's young so you know he doesn't I know it's hard and we'll help you kind of thing it's like well if you're gonna do you know as you got older sports and all these activities and you want to weight lift and you want to do the stuff well then you have to figure out how to do these things and you're expected because you're an older adult, 18, whatever years old, you have to do these things. And same thing when you were four, if you want to go outside and play with your friends, there were certain things that had to be done. So we have these high expectations of how you behaved and the, also the, the idea of what, if you want to do fun things, there's things that have to be done first. And that started really young. I mean, I have video of you t- tape of all you guys at like two, four, and six, mopping the floor and cleaning, you know, <laughs> cleaning the kitchen and doing your chores. Yeah. Um, it was expected. Yeah. Do you think so? It's funny because so many kids ask me how to balance school and soccer and like a social life. And for me, I'm like, you just do it. Like, mm-hmm. if, if, do you think like that, doing that is the reason why I was able to, because in high school I had like a 4.2. I felt like I had tons of friends and I did that stuff. And I also obviously did weightlifting and soccer. Mm-hmm. But do you think that like that high expectations of you need to, like at an early age, four or five, is the reason why I was able to balance it so well? Well, I think some of it's personality. But also, I think it was expected, because when he was, you know, I was, well, part of it is because I was a teacher. I think this helped before. But when you guys were really young, kindergarten, first, second, third grade, that kind of age, it, again, was routine. You guys would come off the bus, bus stop. We'd walk home. The first thing we did was have a snack. And then homework, yeah. homework first, get it out of the way. And I'd sit here at this table actually. Well, there was no go up to your room for homework. It was set down at the table. Yeah. Yeah. You guys would have your list of homework that was done for the week on the little planner. And then you could we could see it. And then also you know, check with the teachers, make sure you're not budging the Yeah, the no list. homework this week, dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then our liar. <laughs> and, uh, would never let you guys just go up to your room and do home- even when in high school you guys pretty much stayed down yeah, here at the yeah. table and did homework. You never really. It's, did. it's funny because like you watch some TV shows or stuff and kids go straight up to the room and do homework or something. Like, I never did that. And I think honestly, I understand the concept of that. It's about people think that they send their kids up to their bedroom to do their homework because it's quiet mm-hmm. and you won't be disturbed. But in my thought was that that's the most likely time for you to get distracted. Especially with this now, the oh, cell phone. Could you imagine doing that? No. Well, you had all the uh, uh, video games that you guys could just hop on yeah, too. Yeah, so yeah. it was just... Looking back on everything, do you think you... Is there anything that you regretted from parenting us? I mean, you like I said, you raised at least one perfect kid. Oh, brother. <laughs> no, but do you think like there's anything like, you know what, maybe looking back on it, we didn't need to do that and the, anything? Are you like, no, I think we did a pretty good job. I think we did a pretty good job. It's pretty hard because you watch all those shows like uh, you tweak something and then something else yeah, unexpected yeah, yeah. happens. That's why people ask me like, do you want? Would you want to change anything with your soccer career? Like your training was well, like, well, maybe if I would have done better earlier on, it wouldn't have had that drive to work so hard later on. You know, yeah. you can't answer it, but like looking back on it, nothing like pops out at you like that. No, I mean I, I remember times that I discipline you and I probably shouldn't have been or us disciplined you and probably shouldn't have been so harsh or maybe we should have been harsher or sometimes we let as you got older things go give you a second chance when maybe we shouldn't have I don't know but it all worked out mm-hmm. so but I like the idea of you guys when you were young to come home do your homework and I was the hawk and kind of monitored and just to make sure it got done and then you're free then, yeah, you, yeah, then yeah. I think that was a, a good lesson to teach get the like you always say, you know, kind of like get the stuff you don't like done first. Like yeah. eat your, if you don't like vegetables, eat your vegetables first and then move on. And then the hard part's done. Yeah. And then you can move on to what you like. That's why I started today off doing my cardio that I yeah. hate. And then I go my weightlifting mm-hmm. and I end with the soccer and yeah. then stretching at the very end. Yeah. Because if you did soccer first, you might just go, ah, oh, that's, that's good. Good enough for today. I got a lot of cardio <laughs> yeah, doing that. Yeah, I don't that. need that John Terry, Terry uh, <laughs> cardio routine. Yeah. 
I, I would say the only thing that, obviously, Laura was the one that did the, as a teacher, the educational stuff and set those expectations. And I was on the coaching side. Um, I wish I would have went with my gut more, what I knew people should have been doing more. And because I'd always tell Matthew, you know, you, you need to take this more serious. You need to work in this, this and this. And he goes, hey, my uh, coach is an ex semi pro coach. And if he thinks that's important, he'd be telling me that. Yeah. And I, every time I told him that I'd get all these excuses. Well, he's, you know, he's played a lot more soccer than you have. What did you do in high school? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just and then later in your career, like when you went to UC Davis and say, hey, if you're a forward up there, you need to be a holding forward. And. Then you called me and said, oh, guess what we did all practice today? I had to post up Pat yeah. or Dan, and they you know, beat me up. It's like, yeah, I still need to do that in high school. Yeah. But I didn't have a soccer background. I was just going with my gut. It's like, hey, you need to be doing this this more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, even when awesome. Billy sucked me in as assistant coach, mm-hmm. and it's like I never, I don't know why, yeah. but then he'd always make me, especially when I was helping on Michael's team. Yeah. It's like you need to talk more. Yeah, and for background, um, pretty much like every, like since like what, kindergarten? Yeah. Kindergarten, you would take me out and be like, work on long balls, work on the like, basketball, soccer, baseball. Like we were doing extra stuff from kindergarten on pretty much. Yeah. And even in, like earlier, I'd say, I mean, we were playing basketball in the living room and like, I don't think we played soccer before kindergarten. Because no. I didn't, <laughs> didn't know what soccer was. But then like everything. But then you would tell me like, because it's like, okay, now we need to work on this. Let's do this. I feel like, I think I was like 50, 75% of the time I would I would do it. But there was obviously any time that you're pushing a kid is going to have some pushback. It was yeah. more when you got older. It wasn't like elementary school. Yeah, because it's. When a kid's not physically ready to do a power kick, there's just no way they're going to do a power kick. And <laughs> maybe that was a little too young trying to get you and Emily and Michael to do that. Yeah, with a size five ball. <laughs> yeah. Is there right. anything going on with your camera? Oh, yeah, I got to change that. It's, it just stops every every so often. Did we, they miss a bunch of stuff? Well, it's mainly for this. I just throw out the logo when the, the thing doesn't work. It's fine. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's good. But that's for background. That's the background. It's like, my dad would always do the extra training and everything. I and mean, you did a lot of like extra educational stuff with me. Yeah. Um, but now with like Michael, so obviously I have my brother, Michael, my sister, Emily, and then um, the star on the top of the, on the tree, me. <laughs> obviously Michael's in the background. <laughs> Michael's right, just right back there. I don't know if he's listening now. Oh, card full. That's why it's not working. Ah, oh, dang. I forgot to delete the card. Ah. Um, oh boy. We're going to pause the podcast real quick. I'm going to just delete some stuff off the card, and then we'll start it up again here soon. I'm sorry for all you guys watching on YouTube. This is not how it's supposed to be. (laughs) And we're back. Sorry about that, YouTube watchers. Um, My card was full, so I'd delete some stuff. All right, so back to Emily, Michael, and me. Yes. How would you describe if you had like a sentence or something, each one of us? Start with? We'll start with me. Oldest, we'll go oldest to youngest. Let's go so me, Emily, you're, Michael. You're talking about like just like overall. Overall, as a person, just if someone was like, so you have three kids, what are they like? Real quick, little synopsis of us three. You want to go first? I'm um, starting with you. Yeah. Um, you usually act before thinking. <laughs> he went negative on that. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and the doggers are going to love this one. Yeah. <laughs> act before thinking. No. But do you think, okay, question. Not to toot my own horn, but do you think that has helped me in some ways? Like, okay, let's start a podcast. How do I do it? I don't yeah, know. Let's get a true. microphone. Because you don't overthink things, yeah. for sure. You just kind of go, okay, I'm going to do this. Let's, you know, take chances. Who cares? Yeah. If I make a mistake, it's no big deal. Yeah. I was just thinking, you can't walk over the cord without tripping over the light and knocking okay. it over. I tripped <laughs> over the light one Here's time. what I would say. I would say, I, the best way I find to describe people is that I used to say when you were little you know super high energy always got to be running moving going constantly um and you always had to be the center of attention so i tell people now that kind of drove everybody crazy when you were little but as you've gotten older and matured um i was said he'll probably grow up to be a game show host or something (laughs) because it's like always that attention seeking but um that high energy um you know very personable, uh, likable person, um, a hard worker, um, self-motivated, um, great work ethic, but um, 
just just to go get her with a with a very big personality and negative stuff um very messy um it's like just sloppy like when you come home it, 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 yeah. uh, we can feel it because there's like clothes and stuff. I'm all gonna over pick the place. all this stuff up today. Yeah. Speaking of that. Um, I think you've only been here a week. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, negative. I, yeah. So that messiness and um, sometimes probably a little too. Um, I'd say like s- not self-absorbed isn't the right word, but you kind of are just kind of in your own little world and sometimes don't notice maybe the needs of people around you because you're just so focused on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, when that's you, pretty self. Self-absorbed. Yeah, that but, sums it up. but when you're not, but when he's not super involved in what he's doing, like if it's not like a, a work or a project or school or whatever it was, you're very aware and very kind person mm. to those around you. It's just you don't seem to be able to multitask. Yeah. Uh, multitask. Yeah, that's yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. That's, yeah, that's a really good. That's really accurate. That's a really, <laughs> really accurate. Yeah. So, you know, each one, Emily? Yeah, let's go. Oh, I forgot about Emily. Yeah. Speaking of being <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, like, I have a sister. Okay, now I'm, we're done talking about me. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, this, is, this question's done. No, yeah. no, 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 Emily, Emily. Emily, uh, she... And for reference, I am 26. Emily is my younger sister. She's 24. And then Michael's 22. Yes. So, we are two years apart. Yes. So, I would say with Emily, my, my version is she's... <laughs> All, <laughs> you're giving me that look. No. She is also a very hard worker, very focused, um, but she is an overthinker. Yeah, she's the one that sometimes can't make the decision, or you know, just kind of panics. Wow, going negative right away, huh? <laughs> <laughs> just kind of panics a little bit and um, has to be calmed down, you know. And she gets a little bit more nervous, I think, around the crowd. She's not exactly a like stand up in front of the crowd type of person that yeah. would be like, oh, everyone come look at me. And she's very, um, she likes to kind of just hang out, more of a homebody, kind of just watch her movies and yeah. she's not a partier or anything. Yeah. Maybe. And she's just a natural, I mean, everything she does or wants to do, she's just a natural at it without yeah. much effort. It's yeah. just kind of frustrating for people. Oh, I'm going to do track. Oh, okay, I'm going to do the decathlon. And... Oh, now I'll do it in college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Just go do it in college. Yeah. No, no worries. She's a natural athlete for sure. And then even with, with um, work and academic stuff, she sets yeah. her mind to it and she you know, gets amazing grades. Once she gets her mind set. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's where she's a lot like Chuck, where <laughs> it's the procrastination to start the project but then once she starts it, it's done to perfection. Yeah. You are really good at starting the projects and, you know, finishing them all the way to the end. But she, both her and Chuck have a hard time getting things started. Yeah. Now let's go to Michael. Michael. Michael, you want me to start? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you always look at me. Oh, look at that look. <laughs> just, just a mean look. <laughs> I know. I think Michael is, um, he's super intellectual. Mm-hmm. He is also extremely funny, but he sometimes has to take a back seat to you when you are, you know, taking over the show. And I feel like I've learned to. You have because um, calm down with that. Yeah, but super funny guy, very caring. Probably the the um, the probably the most. I don't know what the right word is, but he's the most uh, where you think think it out before you actually say it. Yeah. The process is a lot more before he actually engages. And yeah. sometimes in conversation, the conversation's gone before he actually <laughs> decides to get in there. We're on the next topic. I know. So anyway, going back to that. Going the, back. Yeah. Really... <laughs> but he's not the type that puts his foot in his mouth. Rarely. He's not the type that... Um, he doesn't need to be talking constantly. Yeah. But if somebody gives him the opportunity, he can talk and talk and On talk. subjects that he likes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and good. super, super caring person, I think. Oh, he's, he's over there saying He's, <laughs> he's laughing. laughing. He's back there. He's behind. crying. So now what's one piece of advice to each of us for our negative traits that we need to work on? If you had one like piece of advice, like one thing that you want to say to each of us to remind ourselves later on in life or wherever to, to think about stuff that might not be our strongest points we just talked about it today <laughs> what <laughs> in soccer oh no. not in soccer <laughs> just in general as well a that's person. my background i always yeah, do the coaching my... stuff yeah 
Well, I was okay. I would say with you, I think what you need to do is make a, a, a extreme effort to think about the people that you're around and what can something that you can do for them. First, yeah. you know, make it an even 50-50 relationship with Mimi, with your friends, with us, with your family. Just give and take. Yeah. And think about what does, what does this person need from me? You know, do, do, does my mom looks like she's doing everything for Christmas that maybe I should get up and help <laughs> <laughs> with? No, right? well, that one hits a little hard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I'd say with Emily, I would. Oh, well, and then, yeah, do not be a uh, imposition on people. Imposition? You know. Do not impose. Oh, yeah. Always oh, sorry. No, Duggers. not us. <laughs> no, no, Duggars. No, yeah. No. Yeah. You just, you know, always want to be, if you stay at people's houses with the Hornsby's or anybody, just, you want to treat everything with respect. Their stuff, them, you know, to go the extra, go above and beyond to um, make them mm-hmm. feel okay with you being there with them. Yeah, be invisible. Yeah. And then when you come home, do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Emily, I would like to see her relax, enjoy life a little bit more, just in general, and not worry about making a wrong decision. Mm-hmm. Just you know, just just do it. And if it doesn't work out, then you learn something from it. And just don't stress out about everything so much. Especially the little stuff. Yeah, the big yeah. stuff she does, but she treats the little stuff just like the big stuff. So she sweats the little stuff too much. Yeah, she gets a little too stressed out. And Michael, I'd probably just say, don't take things so seriously. L- laugh a little bit more and don't take things personally. Just just be able to laugh at yourself. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Yeah. That's really good. All right. Um, next. Thank goodness they're not talking about us. I know. You know. Yeah, actually, that brings me to my next oh, point. Dang oh, dang it. <laughs> what are the worst things about your parents? <laughs> um, no, the next one is now we're going to go away from parenting just in general of your guys' life. What, besides, okay, so I say in this question is what is or what have been the happiest moments of your life? And besides, obviously, the birth of your children, your wedding day, the stuff, the corny stuff. Yeah. Like, besides that, what has been, do you have like a moment or an idea, a day that you think has been like the happiest moment or day of your life? That's, that's a difficult one because we've is, had a pretty good life. We have. I, I mean, I just kind of think that, I don't think I had necessarily a happiest moment, but I think it's just been counting my blessings, you know? Pretty good. It's no by by no means like super rich or super you know none of that stuff. But just healthy family. Everyone stayed focused. Didn't do drugs. Didn't do anything that caused you know any problems. It was pretty much sports and study and really trying to be a healthy, strong person that contributes to society and just to have three out of three kids be what I consider successful. And I don't mean successful necessarily with money or anything that just successful in doing what they love and are happy um, was really our goal. In fact, remember when the, we were, that your book, the seven, what's seven? seven habits of successful people, yeah. Bef- highly successful people. Yeah. Remember, you know that? Yeah. I know, I so I when, book, bef- w- was it be- before we had kids where you said, or maybe when they were first born, right Chuck's, around when they were born, yeah. Chuck said to, he said, you know what our goal should, or my goal is, and you said, I <laughs> I must have got there. No, when I say you remember, you, he Sounds said, like a really deep and profound I, moment. I want, well, I want our kids to just want to spend time with us, you know, when they get older, like in high school and college, because, you know, it's just high school kids and their parents are always butt heads, but you just kind of, you, you want your kids to be good people and look at us as yeah that that was outside of the book but i remember we both said that especially you was when our kids get to high school uh-huh. i don't want our kids to hate us yeah mm-hmm. but yet you want to be a parent yeah. you don't want to be their friend because that i think that backfires it's that little fine line about parenting so they're not allowed to get into trouble but then don't over parents so that they just hate you and want to get out of there. Yeah. Then it backfires and then they come back when they're 26. Yeah, they never leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't think there was a specific moment. I think it's just um, overall, I think maybe that's what it is. Maybe just appreciating or trying to appreciate. I'm a little bit more negative than he is. Yeah. But appreciate every good moment of every life every, every day, I mean, because you know. Yeah. Well, it's always the three things, you know, family, 
fitness and you know then your finances. So if you get all three of those working for you, then it's not much to complain it's great. about. No, it's like a three-legged stool. You can't be happy without having all three of those. Mm -hmm. If you have money but you have terrible health, that's not great. Yeah. If you don't have family to share. So is your answer success. is your answer similar then to mom? Just like overall. Yes, because just yeah, it's been pretty blessed life. Yeah, that's good. Knock on wood. <laughs> Stop knocking on the table. <laughs> Don't know what to do. <laughs> this whole podcast is going to be ding, 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 ding. Um, what is your best memory of us kids? Separate or all together? Do you have anything that's like, again, is it the same, similar answer to the last one? Or? Well, I think, you know, it's always, um, vacations are always fun, you know, but I think um, they're, they're silly things. They're not, for me, they're not, it's not, anything really substantial it's kind of stuff that these guys would hear and not get you yeah. know because it's like the silly like bike that... riding in sun river yeah but that was every summer and then the racing we did i mean that was and you always having to take the shortcuts and beat everybody <laughs> always have to beat cheating. everybody and <laughs> i then... wasn't cheating to take a shortcut <laughs> well no but and you're like i just want to go for a leisure leisure leisurely bike ride and you're like J -j 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 running you know biking as fast as you can always had to be a constant race and <laughs> i remember my legs i actually remember my legs being so sore yeah Every single summer of vacation, because I would be biking so much, yeah. nonstop. <laughs> well, we did it, and we'd stay far from the pool, because we'd have to ride our bikes there, because their goal was to wear you guys out, so when you ate dinner, 7 o'clock came, you guys would be in bed, and then we could have... <laughs> yeah, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so it's those little things, you know, and then just the funny things around here, and um, like you guys were running down the stairs you know videotaping you when santa came and it was the um actually i loved the reading every single night our little routines and it was just i know he didn't like that i like that and yeah. it's just those little funny moments that as you guys grow up sometimes will flash in my head they're just really i it's, i had like a similar question like on a, i just do like a snapchat like q a type thing just like answer the questions so someone asked like what has so been your best memory playing a, like as a pro soccer player mm -hmm. and it's like like for obviously the obvious answers are signing the pro contract playing against Kaka, playing against twenty five thousand. but like when i look at it like what do i enjoy like someone the question was phrased what will you remember the most like what did you enjoy the most mm -hmm. and if it's the same thing it's the daily showing up to the stadium with your closest friends next to you coming to the locker room seeing conrad seeing sebastian seeing right. ryan howe and all these other guys on my team you know and just the daily getting there, playing two touch. The really, there's not like one moment, but it's the daily, like of just being there. Right, because I think about like I remember clearly like going to Halloween parties, you know, yeah. in elementary school, and volunteering <laughs> at the school, going to all the sporting events. All those things are great memories. I love, we love sitting in the stands for all you guys' sports and videotaping and doing all that stuff and being with the parents and you know all that. It was all great memories. Yeah. Um, next thing is, so for me, how do you think that, um, what aspects of your personality traits do you think I have gotten from each of you and how am I different That's from each That's easy. Of you? We talk yeah. about that all the time. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Oh, go ahead. Fun. Well, obviously you're talking from me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. The, no, the, the amount of talking. Oh, the amount of talking. Yeah. Um, obviously I think from, you get from me the, um, the more of the, the, the routines, you get your, I don't want to say work ethic, because you have a super good work ethic. It's, I guess it's more of the, I don't know, the, like the, the list making, the, um, the, the planning part, but he's, we just are organized in different ways, I think, right? Because mm -hmm. you're super, or, you're way more organized in some things than I am. Right. I, yeah, um, I'm struggling with it, just trying to think it through. But the, um, no, you're the, Task get stuff through. Um, um, you said it earlier. Um, not compulsive, but just um, you know, where it's like, hey, I want to do a soccer, so I'm going to do self motivated. Oh, yeah. And then that's you. Yeah. Just to get extremely self motivated, no procrastinating, and go. I think you get the. We talk a lot when we're comfortable. If we're not comfortable, then we don't talk a lot. Yeah. Then we go quiet. But once you're around your your situation, you're comfortable. Then wow, boom! You're chit chatting. You're 
center of attention. Mm -hmm. And I think that's more my side. But the creative yeah. side comes from him, for sure. Yeah. All your creativity. I have zero creativity. <laughs> I can't think outside the box at all. <laughs> your klutziness. That's me. <laughs> the spilling things and all that stuff. Breaking stuff, spilling stuff. No. That's all my moth. Yeah. I'm about to think before you act. That's, that's me. That's you? Sorry. 100%. All your bad stuff came from me. What about the not thinking about other people? Self-absorbed. Yeah, that's, that's probably that's me you. too. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I tried. <laughs> you did the best you could. Yeah. Like what you're given. When, in fact, at one point when we were, I think it was dating, you'd be oh, like, gosh. he'd go, this is Laura and this is the world. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> because we'd, I'd pick her up and she'd go, How'd your day go? And then I'd start to talk, and she's not listening. My day was good. <laughs> no, and then it'd go, and and then it snowed, and we got in a car wreck, and yeah. that was bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I just wanted him to have okay. him finish his story okay. so I could talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Uh, okay, Laura and the world. Yeah, and the but world that's what around. that's what you do. Like, when, where were we the other day? And we're out to dinner, and Emily was talking. We were somewhere, and Emily was talking, and then you remembered something. Yeah. And you were standing right here, and she could feel you. I was like... <laughs> yeah, you wanted to, to tell what you, yeah. whatever had to say right away, and she's talking. She's totally distracted. And then she turns to you and says, okay, Matthew, go ahead, talk. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we, I know you need to say something. <laughs> Yeah, that's I, yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> I was just going to talk about my promotion, but go ahead and talk about that really good power kick you did, <laughs> and what the fans say when you kicked it. Um, so I talk about a lot about how like my biggest influence have been you guys, and then like especially in soccer, it's been like dad. I know you always say dad, never mention me, but go well, on. you've been a good big influence in my life. But I just drove you everywhere. So, yeah. You brought you brought gummy bears and Foreign treats slices. afterwards. Orange slices, yeah. Gummy bears. Um, but who are the person? Who is the person or the people who have influenced your lives the most? Of course, after your parents. Yeah. Um, I remember you just think about people when you go back there. Um, like it's a, a seventh grade math teacher that pulled me out of class and said, you know, this is the path you should take. Um, like going into engineering because strong math science mm -hmm. and then there's always some negative stuff that you know teachers saying well you're not very good in English so don't take any English classes which didn't work out very well that makes sense <laughs> I yeah. know if you're really bad at something <laughs> yeah. you should ignore that so and that crippled me forever yeah so if you're not good at something you have to work on it which you know corrected with you guys mm -hmm. and then honestly I think that book when I was at Boeing, that book, The uh, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, that was just mind-blowing. That, yeah. that was a good book. That's amazing. Well, I'm going to sound cheesy. <laughs> All right. Well, what's new, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be me. Actually, I was going to say him yeah. because um, I <laughs> oh, was. Oh, actually, is? Yeah, Ooh. I was actually going to say that because I don't think that um, like high school, college... I really had, that was kind of my problem, is I didn't have somebody who was helping guide me to, like, follow my dreams, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I was kind of lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mean, how do you know what you want to do when you're 18, 19, 20 years old and who you are? And I was an only child, yeah. so I didn't have, you know, siblings to bounce things off or anything. And um, I think I was just kind of, like, wandering a little bit until I met you. Aww. That's adorable. But he made me really mad. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I think it was, he did get me more focused than I had ever been. Mm -hmm. So I didn't always enjoy that. But <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. Like, I talk about, like, Mimi with the, the fo like, that stuff. Because, like, um, I definitely, because I push Mimi to work on her stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes too hard, I feel like. Yeah. And she'll, like, kind of, like, retaliate and get mad at me. But I feel like it's good for the long run of yeah. her business and everything I, I feel like i can help her focus in on that stuff and and not because i think mimi is like the i'm kind of like emily where it's like overthink stuff to the point mm -hmm. of like it needs to be perfect before i can put it out and i'm like i don't care film on the iphone 5 let's get this up on youtube tonight you know yeah, yeah. and so i think like i i feel like it's but i think it's good to balance it because there's also times where i'm like you know what maybe i should spend a little bit more time on that yeah. video that now has a million views and i maybe i could learn how to film better bit, yeah. yeah but 
but there's a lot to be said about learning real life, real life experiences, you know, and, yeah. but no, I just, I feel like he just kind of got me uh, focused with like what you're telling a lot of your viewers is that, you know, think about what you want and setting your goals and what are you going to do to reach those goals? And, you know, what is it you want? What do you like? What do you want to do? Well, I mean, what makes you happy? Those types of things versus just going from project to project and, well, you know, yeah. not knowing and oh, I still need to work on it, but. Long-term goal oriented. You were not very good. No, at I have I have horrible long-term goals. Yeah. I've always just been about today in this moment. What made me happy and um, yeah, because we didn't do a lot when you guys were younger, and it's like all the other parents would be, oh, we're taking our two and three-year-olds to, you know, Disneyland and Disney World, and how come we're not doing that? And it's like, well, for one, they're never going to remember, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> and for much true, I don't even remember the trips we did go on later on, like Hawaii. I don't remember Hawaii. Yeah, you yeah, were like nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I was just dumb. <laughs> no, the first because Mike, the first time we went to Hawaii, Mike um, wasn't even born. He wasn't. Well, yeah, I, I was so talking. that was three. Mm-hmm. And then we did not take a lot of trips because... Because of his long-term goals. It's like, yeah. you know, better to save and invest and do or you know, not just spend it. Where I'm like, I want a new couch and I want a new yeah. car. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sacrifice early and yeah. then enjoy it later. But uh, it, it was hard because you wanted everything at once. It's yeah. like you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Just, I feel like um, with soccer too, like I remember stuff like... Um, like when I make the B team or do anything and you'd be like, well, don't think about now. Think about like when I was 16, even on U16, think about um, the work you're going to put in and like everything else and where you're going to be at college, you know? It was always like long-term, long-term. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it's like a really good balance to focus on the long-term, but then at the same exact time, do it's like do stuff in the short-term that's going to get you the long-term, but don't dwell about the short-term that you're not going on vacations or don't dwell about the short-term that you're not on the A team or whatever. Focus on the long term. Well, you know, like and that. The, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm done. And then the other part of that I think is important, especially for your viewers, is you don't want to have that negative thought when something bad happens. Yeah. Like when you get cut or you get a coach that calls you and says, sorry, or uh, you're on the B team again, when you should be on the A team. Because I, in my mind, multiple <laughs> times, I could not sleep and was so mad because it was so unfair and so political with that you should he should just quit i'm sick of this stuff he should just quit i'm done mm. with this because it's not you know it's not truly the best players they're getting in these eight teams it's just not fair and it's just ridiculous a waste of time so that was my emotional reaction mm. which i'm sure Tons of people have because it happens to everybody yeah. at least once. So most people everybody's, more than once. Everybody's always around a really bad coach yeah. that just like Emily in soccer. Yeah. That just forced her out of soccer. And our goal was um, keep playing as many sports as you can, like you basketball and uh, soccer. Emily, Michael, basketball, soccer, and Michael, baseball. Um, until you grow and go through puberty. And yeah. then the playing field's leveled out again, everybody's athletic again, and then see where the cards lie. But yeah. if you quit early because of a bad coach, um, you just never know what's gonna happen. Because I still think, uh, you know, Michael could have been a great uh, baseball player. And he was young for his age for soccer. I think if he would have been matured, he yeah. could have handled, had a great opportunity in soccer. Um, but I was the one where he was looking at those long-term goals and where do we want to be eventually? And you will have these setbacks and you will have these unfair, crappy moments that yeah. will make you want to quit and don't get emotional and then do something you regret. If you would have quit soccer, yeah, even if we didn't know what was going to, even if it didn't turn into this, even if it was just playing through high school, yeah. that's an opportunity that would have been really sad that you would not have Because I, I had a great... Senior year of yeah. high school playing. Yeah, even Josh if you, Kelly, you know, even yeah. like not even success, like it was successful, but just the experience of with that team. Yeah, like I love that team. Because even if you wouldn't have gone on to play college or um, beyond that, those memories and those times that you had and that camaraderie with your teammates was something mm-hmm. that you would have cherished for the rest of your life. And to if if he wasn't around, I would have had you quit. <laughs> <laughs> After a couple, some of those moments were just yeah. unbelievably unfair, and like I would get so emotional. Yeah, I was always pretty good at, even when you tried out for a bridal mile that very first time and you were late for the, 
the practice yeah. and nobody knew you. So you just stood there by yourself yeah. <laughs> and uh, I watched the tryouts and it's like, um, and remember that? Cause you asked, how'd he do? And it's yeah. like, well, there's like four or five of them kids that are really good. And then Matthew's in the group from like six to 10. And then there's a group after that. Um, and then you got put on the B team and then it's just like, oh, that's a mistake. And Laura's like, well, maybe you just don't know what you're saying, no, yeah. talking about. <laughs> you don't know soccer. Maybe you and didn't. then after that first tournament, you got pulled up to the A team yeah. and they, then they had to reshuffle. Yeah. You've always been really, really good at like identifying and seeing talent in soccer, even though you've never played. You know, and right? basketball. Basketball, especially basketball, but like mm-hmm. soccer too. Like you would identify players that like, oh, I don't see much potential in him or like I see a lot. And then that's usually the players that pan out, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's a few exceptions. I want to say I'm on here because they're probably you know, they remember. might listen. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> there's a few exceptions, but like actually even know with those, like I feel like their careers haven't like they've got early success, but they haven't gone up from that early success. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. Like I feel like always though. Like don't you think so too? Oh yeah. In fact, it's now it's just whenever we see anything for your kind of level. Yeah. And even when we go to some of our friends' high school games and stuff, and some of the things we see, it's like, well, you yeah. know, they who some of the star sometimes the, the stars of those teams, not always, but sometimes I think they get a reputation young, and it just carries on with them. Yeah. And even though other people, you know, are just as good as time goes the on. The one you're thinking of, he, um, his at the wrong position too, and that he got moved into the right position, and he's, yeah. he's hanging on. But that that one position is a tough position to be in. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then even um, like for St. Louis FC or like Orange County, you would be saying like, oh, what do you think? Like I'd be like, you know, saying the starting lineups and you'd be like, oh, well, what do you think of this player? Like, I don't like him. You know, or this player, like, yeah, he's good. And then it'd be like, no, nah, everybody like, is why like, isn't he out there? Yeah, we're like, well, you think the same thing? He should be starting, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I don't know why he's starting. But I mean, it's just little gossip things, but it's just funny that ne- having never played that you can identify it, or, but you watch so much over the really years. a lot of soccer. But, um, but still, I mean, I feel like that's just a talent in itself of being able to identify what makes somebody good at a sport, you know? Yeah. And once you learn the sport, still, some of the great coaches I know are, love players. I'm like, what do you mean you love this guy? Yeah. And then he goes onto a new team and then he crumbles because okay. he's actually not, he just had that early on, like, love. Yeah, he did that one move the coach yeah. loved and put the ball, and it's like, oh my god, he's the greatest. But thing. But it's that and, same thing going back at the, where it's like, well, he's you know he's got more experience. You kind of like put off the foot off the gas of your opinion. I, I wonder like if you would have gone through soccer like a, even up through high school level, you know, you played like how like much more effective even it would have been. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing. regrets. I mean, that's the big regrets when I was helping. I just didn't have the confidence to go out there and override a coach that was a semi-pro coach. Yeah. And then, but when Michael, when I was the assistant coach with Michael, um, I did that a lot. They were going to cut, they were going to cut somebody off his team. And then just like, you cannot cut that kid off the team. Yeah. And he turned out to be the MVP of the team. Did he? Uh-huh. That's funny. <laughs> and we went to the state finals and he was wow. the MVP yeah. of the team. That's crazy. And then for reference too, so my dad, um, after I graduated and went through high school, my brother was three grades younger than I was, even though he was four years younger. But then he, when it was a senior, just his junior year, junior and senior. Oh no, Facundo came in senior year. Yeah. So junior year, sophomore. I was the member. Guys, the JV two coach because the yeah. Uh, yeah, sophomore year, you were the JV two coach of the high school, and having never played, but did like I mean, you had obviously raised me and had been around soccer your whole yeah, life. Yeah. And then, um, then Michael's junior year, the next year, the varsity coach asked you to be the assistant coach to the varsity soccer team. It was pretty funny. And then like all the stuff you were saying too was like stuff that I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. And then seeing it, it worked out and they went really far. Yeah. I remember just going to practice and watching the kids just do stuff. And it's like, <laughs> and the coaches watch him. It's like, doesn't that drive you crazy that they kick the ball back and forth and it just pops up in the air when they yeah. trap it and <laughs> yeah. and, like, oh, no, I've, and I've seen I mean I've seen coaches that even at the pro level and nah, I maybe not the pro level but like semi pro level college level same thing they were doing a passing drill and they're not even being like get a clean pass or worried about the touch it's just like yeah just go through the motions you know we'll get into the game and it's like you come on to, yeah you're moving yeah. past the stuff they could, they have to have because yeah. there's nothing worse in the game when one bad touch the defense cracks and then yeah. the whole because one bad touch ruins it all yeah it's just pinging 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 one bad touch uh now everyone stop the runs are over his time everything defense yeah because i even know on some of your comments some of the people will um viewers will make comments about um 
passing. There's a lot of passing drills, and yeah. sometimes it's kind of you know boring. Yeah. Like, well, unfortunately, it's the most important thing, really. Yeah. I mean, you've got if how, how many games do you watch where it's, that happens with like the they can't trap the ball and it pops up and then the defender comes up on him and it's all done. If well, they could have trapped it well. It's, it's funny because the Timbers, Liam Ridgewelt, who's an ex EPL and he's at the end of his career. When he played with the Timbers out of the back, he could put 80% of the balls right at the feet of somebody running up the field. And then when he wasn't playing, the Timbers struggled, and you'd watch the other people on defense pass the ball, and it gets these curved balls that, you know, power, somebody's running up the sideline, and they pass behind him. Mm -hmm. And by the, the transition or fast break going the other way, the defense catches up and it's blown. Yeah. yeah. Just those yeah. little things that people don't get that to get to the next level, you have to be able to do those perfectly. Yeah. And then if you watch EPL games, you just think, well, that's easy. But every single pass goes from like a, one of the backs all the way up to a forward, and I'll hit a perfect on the foot yeah. running. And you're thinking, oh. But that's what separates MLS from EPL players. Yeah, it's true. It's the little tiny things, yeah. Switching directions a little bit. First off, um, Dad, I'm going to have you raise your hands above your head for the entire rest of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he doesn't, yeah. Just put them in your hands in your lap. <laughs> he always has to. Yeah, no, I'm, a, I'm such a hand talker, though. But, um, but yeah. All right, so the one thing I really, really am super excited about in terms of the long-term future is that this isn't going to go away. The internet, the podcast, my videos. Like, my great, 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 great grandkids will probably could go on YouTube and watch my first vlogs, yeah. you know? So, which means that hopefully one day, like, my grandkids, grand, grand, grandkids are going to watch this at me interviewing their great-grandparents or great-grandparents. My babies. People that, like, <laughs> yeah. And then I think it's so cool because it's like, I'm like, oh, what was, like, your grandma like? Because mm -hmm. I never... Awesome. And I never got to meet her, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I wish I could meet her. Oh, but yeah. then now I'm thinking, like, my grandkids are they going to ask about like their parents or whoever, right. their mom's grandma. So like, what do you want to pass on to your great, great, great grandkids? <laughs> no pressure here. Just yeah. keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a... Uh... You go first. <laughs> Nancy. Is there any piece of like, I know it's really, really tough. Yeah, but, like, I wish I had more time to think about this. Yeah. yeah. This, you know. What about something just about yourself you want to like... Yeah, so my name's Laura. I did this and this and this. Did the best I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry where this family went after this generation. Yeah. We just tried to be real, <laughs> and it didn't always work out. <laughs> I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I would, tough, yeah. it would say I just, I think just the biggest thing is probably just to be true to yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard one. I think because I think the biggest one of my bigger re regrets. I have many, but <laughs> one of my bigger ones is, and I think this is pretty typical of younger people, spend a lot of time worrying about what other people think. Yeah. And if I could go back in time, I, I like today. I don't think about it as much. Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes when I do something really stupid, <laughs> but overall. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. If you don't like me, fine. But if you, you know, great. But when I was younger, I spent a lot of time worrying about that kind of stuff. And I think if I had anything I could tell to anybody younger, it would be just be true to yourself and it will all work out. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't need approval from your friends or from <clears> anybody. <throat> you just need to do what you feel is right for you. And obviously, with that being said, that you're doing the good things, you know, but um, I just think a lot of time is spent on people waste a lot of time, energy, and worry on what other people think of them, and it's really a waste of time. It's um, it's funny because when you guys were growing up, there was a cartoon that we watched, and then one of the things that it was Magic School Bus, and that Miss Frizzle would always say is, uh, "Take chances, make mistakes." And then that always stood with us because yeah. in everything, like when you're trying to progress in soccer, you get worse before you get better mm -hmm. in everything. But when, you know, to do something new, you get out of your comfort zone and then you'll get better. But if you never get out of your comfort zone, you're going to stay just stagnant. Yeah. And I think that was a little bit of a regret that we probably had too, especially more me probably. But there, most of my regrets that I have boiled down to that, that mm -hmm. I was scared to make a mistake or I was scared of what people thought of me. 
and the older you get and time passes those moments just disappear yeah. none of it I mean it just it doesn't matter yeah Go out there. If you're talking about soccer, go out there and try those moves. You know, if you're talking about asking that girl out, just do it. You know, I mean, who cares if she says no or you mess up on, you know, you don't want to always be messed up on the field. But once in a <laughs> while, try it, you know, yeah. and don't you think? That's, that's why I said it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just adding on to it. <laughs> yeah. No. I, like that. I remember Magic School Bus. That was like, we watched that a lot. That's a good one. Um... Where was this last one I just had? Not the last question, but we'll see. Um, what were the hardest moments you had when I was growing up, raising me, that you were like, this kid's not, this kid's a pain in my ass? You were like ready to speak, so. I was coming on <clears throat> him saying ass. No, if you listen to the podcast, we let some bad words slip Ooh. out. Okay. <laughs> I'm not comfortable. Well, the first thing that pops in my mind is, how many millions of times we said, Matthew, stop. Just stop with you trying to be funny. <laughs> and failing. <laughs> and failing. <laughs> and all the long car rides and just you being the comedy act and just stop, you know, that kind of thing. That was because I was with you all the time and those car rides and stuff that we were, you know, I think that was my biggest thing teasing and tormenting. Your little brother and sister. Yeah, and mine was always um, constantly putting yourself above everybody else and just imposing mm -hmm. without any any consequences at all. It's like if I want to eat all the raspberries, I don't care if anybody else wants them. <laughs> I'm just going to eat them all. <laughs> and I don't care if anybody gets them or not. I yeah. mean, that's just, but, you know, when it happens over and over or if it's four in the morning and I'm going to want to make a smoothie, Wake the house up. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. 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 And that, but that's always been even yeah even when you were little it was just this is what Matthew wants and that was, but for me it was mostly the. Ah. <laughs> 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 ah. uh, last question. Yes. And we'll wrap this up. This is actually gonna be a longer podcast. It's almost an hour. Oh. Um, so this is two part. But if you could send a message to yourself. And I think we've talked about regrets, mm -hmm. but just if you could send a message to yourself just 10 years ago, so not that long ago, not back to high school age, because mm -hmm. what are you, you now turning 40 next year? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> wow. That's creepy. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, that would be weird. Um, <laughs> what would you send your, what would you tell yourself 10 years ago? Eat smaller portions. <laughs> <laughs> Exercise more. <laughs> it will catch up with you. <laughs> okay. Brownies are not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably what I would say, honestly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You should say the same thing. <laughs> Eat bigger portions. <sighs> Bulk up a little more. Bulk up a little bit more. Be. <laughs> That's, I, that's a hard one. I'd probably go back to uh, coaching because that was more my role with you guys. Uh, um, yeah. Learning to do, you know, like when you're... Because you don't have a lot of time. You're coaching all three kids. You don't have a lot of time. Yeah. So I was more direct on some of the stuff they needed to work on and you guys didn't appreciate it all the time. But um, I think just being more assertive to the stuff that I believed... Mm -hmm. was the right thing and like running in soccer when a kid's 12 yeah like you'd watch teams and coaches just run for the whole practice and do no skill work yeah and it's like okay they that's running conditioning is not a skill it's uh so work on your skills not non-skill stuff stuff that's going to stick with you yeah because it's the same thing you, we talked about this <clears throat> so much even it made sense to me about when i was like 13 14 you know it's like yeah you go on vacation go over christmas you get the flu you don't lose it completely, but like you lose a good fitness is the first thing to go. You know, you might come back and be a little rusty after a vacation, but it's your technique and your technical skills stay with you. Yeah. And it's like, I agree. I would, if I going forward when I'm a coach, I will never, ever, ever do a session completely on fitness. And if I, if I, this kid really, or this team really needs fitness, Everything's going to be with the ball. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can get amazing fitness with the ball. I well, understand. And that's how I coached basketball. Yeah. We never ran. We didn't do anything. But when at the end of a practice, you guys were exhausted yeah. and tired. 
but uh, practicing three times a week, you can't do conditioning. Yeah. So you might as well do stuff that can carry on in that skill work. But then when it came to soccer, everybody ran. Yeah. I mean, you you look at these coaches at the time. This is in America, though. Yes. It's probably not like this in and England this is, and Spain and Argentina and all this, in these countries. Right. And yeah. that's why Europeans would come to a tryout out of shape. It's mm-hmm. like, well... So, I can play. Uh, I yeah. can play. I, yeah. you know. I can get in shape pretty easily. Yeah, but. exactly. And the Americans are kicking in and running. Like, well, this guy's got no skills. <laughs> yeah, so. he's an athlete, he's but he's great let, shape. Him, let him go. Why does he do track? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, track people. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they take two weeks off and their times don't stay the same. Yeah. And now, last, the very last thing. Hopefully, exact opposite of this question. Hopefully, we'll watch this in ten years. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything to say to yourself? In 10 years. You look good. <laughs> good job with that portion control. <laughs> uh, this is the, oh. Do you have any like, any like bucket list things that you want to tell yourself like I hope you do or just like is it just, just keep on keeping on? Um, I think keep on keeping on. I mean there's a couple more places like to travel but um, Where do you want to go? I would like to go to Greece. Mm-hmm. I would like to go to Hungary since that's where my grandma's from. Um, and there's a couple other little I'd like to go back to Italy. That was, but maybe some Spain, different areas. Yeah. Just, Spain again, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, there's a couple of places like that. But um, besides traveling, I think just continue to try to stay healthy mm-hmm. and um, exercising and eating right and doing our thing. And and I would like my family to you know stay tight and close and you know be happy. Be, you know. Happy to be together. Yeah. Yeah. Same? Ditto? Oh, um, yeah. I thought for one, it would be uh, just get that focus on the positive. Keep Laura focused on oh, the positive. Oh, we're talking about what I need to focus on? <laughs> Not to be negative? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm working. I'm better. I'm better than Mom's I used to be. a lot better. better. Yeah. You're a lot better focusing on the mm-hmm. positive. There's so many times where I'm like, well, what was the other day I was like, well, I was... A weird. That's a nice pause. Not weird. I didn't say that. I was like, that's a nice positive comment, mom. Who is this woman that's taking over my mother's <laughs> body? I wake up in the morning and I do my little yoga stretch and I go, it's a beautiful day and I'm happy to be alive. Mm-hmm. What's what's that the thing Bobby has that that plaque in Emily's kitchen? Oh yeah. It's, it's a is that what? It's a, it's a great day to you know. It's a great day for a great day or something like that. Yeah, I don't it's know. a great day for a great day or, or a good day for a good day or something. And that's, yeah. Yeah, Bobby's just too happy for me no, sometimes. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just teasing. Love you, Bobby. Anything, you say, anything for you to say your future self any different? Uh, just don't take some stuff so seriously. That's, that's probably where Michael gets this. Yeah. Uh, what's the opposite of lightheartedness? Not take, what's the what's Uptight. The uptight. Uh, is, is it uptight? I don't know. Chuck, I mean, I think that he, he has this um, lighthearted, lighthearted, positive, and then build, something gets to him, and it builds up and builds up, and then he explodes yeah. on people, where I'm just like this, you know, <laughs> up and down, up and down, it, during the day, happy, angry, you know, yeah. just, I let it kind of just come out again with the, you know, just not, just reacting, yeah. I just react, where he keeps everything in a positive light until things build up and yeah. explodes, where... Yeah, and that's what you're going to work on in 10 years. You're not going to, yeah, right back at you. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I just said. You just <laughs> reiterated it. And uh, so my, I'll say to do it to my self, future self. My future self in 10 years, how old would I be? That's a hard, that's hard math. 36, 36. to 36. 39. Hopefully, oh, 39. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> honestly, I want to be done with playing soccer yeah 36. I hope, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, that would be good for my body or my life as a person no, i hope hard. at 36 i have a family started and i'm with mimi mm-hmm. and hopefully i'm just same thing kind of like it's like i hope that like i am continuing to pursue become elite i hope that i fall through with like what my goals of like the training headquarters and all that stuff mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be exactly that but following my passion of training soccer you know yeah that kind of stuff um Hope that I continue to make some sort of content, whether it's virtual reality or whatever. And then um, I just hope, same thing as like, I hope, you know, healthy, happy, and just good. Smaller imprint on your family. (laughs) I'm not imposing on people. (laughs) And that I think about other people more. (laughs) Hey, when you're out and about, you do a great job. 
Yeah, with, a, with like out other yeah. people's homes. Yeah, because yeah, we had watched the videos and you're in German, Germany, you're three floors ab- above the people and you're super, super quiet and come home two in the morning. It's just because I love you guys. I feel, I'm so comfortable. You're just with you. comfortable. So come, come home, you can just relax. Yeah. All right. Sorry, sorry. If I'll leave. I'll leave in a couple days. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, this has been the Against All Odds podcast. I hope you enjoyed having my mom and dad here. If you did, don't hit the table. God. And I'm sorry for him hitting the table about every five seconds. There's nothing I can do about it. I tried my best. I didn't touch the table once. <laughs> I know you were you were good. Um, but anyway, thanks you. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought about having these two. Weirdos oh, on don't, the podcast. Don't, maybe don't let us know what they think. Okay, don't let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see you in the next podcast. All right, guys. Peace. Mm-hmm.